about McDonald's for dinner. sunny all day and we decide to go on a walk and I think it's going to start raining. They're like, why do you start raining when we go on walks? Customer dissatisfaction. Oh, here comes the rain. Da -da -da -da. Here comes the rain. And I say, damn it. Why does it got to start raining? Fall off the door, sweet boy. We can't have that. Oh, I know. We cannot have that, can we? I know you want to go. Just give me a second. We'll get you going. If you just hold on a little bit, mister. We'll get you out of the car. Don't worry. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Come on, your horses. Bam. We have a little dog with us today, Buddy in his natural habitat. He is looking for a safe poop zone. Poop, he must. He is looking for the perfect grass that is worthy of holding his poop. This process sometimes takes 10 minutes, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes, but he persists on his quest to find the grass worthy of holding his poop. Look at him go. Such elegance, such vigor, such tenacity. Will he find his poop spot today? Only time will tell. Rain, sleet or snow, he never gives up, never surrenders. Howdy. We are on a walk, as you see, which is pretty rare because today is streaming day, but I was able to get some work done a little early today and I had some time to kill. So I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's all go for a walk. I packed up my little man and headed out, although I've only had a small bowl of food today in the in the morning, so I'm actually kind of shaky and hungry. So I'm a, I'm a little delirious. I forgot to eat. I always forget to eat. I did have a little protein bar, so hopefully that tides me over. But come on, sweet boy. This is a park pretty close to the area that I normally take him to. Um, this one isn't as close to any um, ocean. Well, there is an ocean, but it's it's where the commercial shipping dock is. However, over yonder, there is a little gazebo up on a little hill. My friends and I, when it's not so uh, hot outside, we'll come out here and hang a hammock on the gazebo. And all three of us, you know, we'll do a little pick a nick a pick a nick a nick a nick a pick a nick and stuff. This rain is a little bit more tolerable, but if it starts to rain too hard, I might have to pack it up. Just as I said that, it started getting stronger. Oh boy, howdy. What are we gonna do about that, Mr. Buddy? Little man has still yet to find his pooping spot. As Matt and I were working today, Buddy was just so antsy, just antsy in the pantsy. He was just not letting up. So Matt played with him a little bit, which was awesome, but he was still so energetic. So you know, I was like, you know what? I got the time. Let us go on a walk, tire out this little boy. But tiring him out is not a real thing. You cannot tire out this geriatric grandpa. He's got an infinite energy loop. I think I remember talking about this once on the channel, but this is the foot massager thing that I was talking about. They embed a bunch of pebbles into concrete like this, and then you walk on this bare feet, and you're supposed to just go around in circles. This one's a little bit of a bigger one, but yeah, 
strengthen your feet, massage your feet. That guy back there is just sitting under the gazebo reading. And I'm like, reading? Where's his phone? Where's his switch? Where is his steam deck? Reading. So archaic. No, actually it does it seem very peaceful. Right now I'm uh, reading Shackleton's Adventure. It's called, well, the book's called South, but it's uh, about Shackleton's own account of his exploration of the Antarctic, or trying to get there anyways. But uh, so far it's really, really interesting. What are you doing? So beyond those trees, you could probably kind of hear something, somebody talking, I don't know if you can, but beyond those trees is the gazebo, and this is your view. I always look at this pavement and I think to myself, this would make such a perfect rollerblading area. Okinawa doesn't have a lot of smooth concrete. I want to rollerblade more. I have, I have a pair of rollerblades a friend gave me. I actually fractured my arm on it, but I've been wanting to get back into it, but there's just like no good place to rollerblade. Just, I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, skate parks. We do have skate parks. Um, but I don't want to skate park, you know. I, I want to, I just want to go. I just want to rollerblade. I just, I don't want to stop. Um, but there's really not too many places. Except I look at this and I'm like, this would be so perfect. Everything, it looks so smooth and flat. You know, ever since the injury, even though my cast came off and even though I can walk without crutches, sometimes I kind of get down on myself just because uh, my ankle hurts still. <laughs> like I can feel it right now, especially on the left side of my ankle. And a couple nights ago, I don't know why, I didn't even, I don't feel like I even overexerted it, but I was in bed and about two o'clock in the morning, my ankle started to hurt real bad. Oh man, I couldn't sleep for a couple hours. And I don't really take medicine. I'm not a huge medicine taker, which is ironic because I have a pharmacist for a mom. Having a pharmacist for a mom, you learn a lot of things about side effects and symptoms of what happens when you take too, many too much medicine. And I also saw that effect with my dad. So I do my best to kind of stay away from medication unless I absolutely need it. My mom, when I was a kid, you know, or a teenager, you know, I'd get headaches and I'd reach for that Tylenol. My mom would always be like, wait, 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 why do you have a headache? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, did you sleep? Did you eat? Are you stressed? Did you go get out exercise? She's like, always figure out a way to fix your problems before you reach for the medication. And then she'd list off a list of things that Tylenol has a side effect in. You know, she's obviously a pharmacist, so she believes in the power of medication. But she also knows that people can rely on it too much. You know, over the years, she's realized that there's a lot of issues that people have, that they just use medication to either buffer, band-aid, or what's the word I'm looking for? Use as a quick fix. But she always told me, as a as a from a from a young age, always figure out what you're doing wrong and what's causing your symptoms, and fix what you can first. And if the if the thing still persists, then you use medication. I had that grilled into me since I was a kid. When I was having really bad panic attacks, you know, those ones that were so debilitating that I couldn't even leave the house. I remember I'd go to the emergency room because I thought I'd be having a heart attack. And the doctors would tell me, uh, you just have anxiety. And they were so quick to push out the Xanax. They never stopped to ask me what was causing the anxiety. I had one doctor, one ER doctor, who told me, I think you need to go see a therapist to figure out why you're having these anxieties and get, try to get some sleep, maybe, maybe look into some meditation, maybe some yoga, something that you know, helps de-stress you. Didn't even offer me Xanax, I was really surprised. The entire time I was 
fighting that anxiety. I only took Xanax once. But when I took the Xanax, I remember it did calm me down, but it also made me feel nothing at the same time. And that was around the time that I had realized that Xanax really wasn't fixing my problems. It was just making it so I didn't feel anything. I was like, I have to feel this in order to get through it. I have to, I have to face this head on or I'm never gonna get through this. I can't keep bandaging it with Xanax. And so for after that, I just never took Xanax again. And it took a long time to get through, get through that really bad period of my life, but eventually I was able to overcome it, come it. But I had to feel those feelings raw. I had to feel everything. I had to feel the pain, the frustration, the anxiety, and it was so uncomfortable. It was so debilitating, but I allowed my body to do what it needed to do, which was process the emotions and grieve. Come here, stop trying to lick everything, little man. And little by little, I started to, I started to uh, get through it. Now, obviously, there are people out there that need medication. So this is not a this is not a video criticizing anybody who takes medication or a PSA telling you not to take medication. I'm not a doctor. I am a third grade dropout who has no educational background whatsoever. I'm just talking about my experience. Oh man, I don't see any eggs in it, but I think that used to be a nest. Oh my gosh, I'm just trying to stop and look at things, bro. Just trying to stop and look. Can't even stop for a second. Damn demanding boy. A couple weeks before my dad died, I hadn't seen him in two years prior to that. So I was very, very lucky that I got to see him two weeks before he passed away. Oh, but he pooped, by the way. He finally found a spot worthy. He has accomplished his mission. All rejoice the little man and his bowel movements. Yay! My dad used to take medication, right? He, and he would have handfuls of it. My dad had a bunch of different problems, but he was diagnosed with depression at a pretty young age. And he was always on some kind of medicine, whether it be, I think it started with Prozac and then it just, it started getting more, you know, more heavier and heavier. He was on sleeping pills, he was on anti-anxiety, but all those pills ended up causing a bunch of other symptoms. And uh, so he was taking, taking medication to also combat the symptoms that he got from the original medication he was taking for his like depression and anxiety and stuff. And by the end of his life, he was taking pills morning and night, just handfuls. I, I remember him opening like 10 different bottles, all prescription. And I looked all of it up and they were like, yeah, to do this, if this is for this, this is for this, may cause this symptom. And then I was just like so blown away. This man was basically eating pills for morning and dinner. In that moment, I was just thinking to myself, oh man, like my mom was kind of right. I think we need to turn around, bub. We've kind of walked far from the car. Let's go back this way. Uh, we can go this way, bub. Let's cross the street. That way we get a little, you get to sniff something different. We actually walked pretty close to the zombie factory. Just kind of a distance. Oh my gosh, he's such a dirty boy. Do my eyes deceive me? Is that a trash can that nobody is actually using? What? It's like Japan never has public trash cans around, so when there is a trash can, people are like, I don't know what to do with this. I guess it goes here. And they just put it on the ground right next to the trash can. Silly. Silly people. I feel like when I talk about this stuff, I have to be very, very careful. Because number one, I don't want people to stop taking the medication that doctors prescribe to them. Because again, third grade dropout, not the smartest person in the world. Don't listen to me. I don't know your blood work. I don't know anything. This is not a uh, please stop taking your medication story.
Do you not ever like look around and think to yourself, like every little thing, from the electrical pole to even the pavement on the ground to the grates right there, the rain grates, that somebody out there, much smarter than me, had to come up with this for it to exist in the world, you know what I mean? Everything that's not natural is somebody's invention. Even like the smallest things. Sometimes I think about that and I'm just like, damn, how awesome the mind of humans. Who came up with any of this? Who designed that? Who designed any of this stuff, you know? Actually, from here, you can kind of see the gazebo I was talking about. All right, so. Buddy! I was trying to show you guys, and Buddy was like, no, you cannot show them our secret. So, no gazebo for you guys. But I just called Matt, and he said yes to McDonald's. I spent 10 minutes plucking the stickies off of this boy. I don't think I got it all off either. He's so muddy. I was gonna go home and give him a bath, but he also needs a haircut because he's got his uh, winter fur. And, oh, there's more. Um, this, that's one of the reasons why these, these stickies keep getting to him because he just has so much fur for it to stick to. So I called the I called the, I called the groomer that I normally go to, but unfortunately she's she's uh, temporarily closed. But there's another place down the street from me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a try. I just gave him a call, and she was able to fit it in, fit him in. She was able to fit him in for tomorrow. So I'm gonna give you a summer cut. はい、えっと、ビッグマックセット 1つ。同じくあの、ポテトじゃなくてナゲット。はい。そして同じく飲み物はコカコーラのL my McDonald's. I got my McDonald's. You know, I actually thought for a second that I should probably hide anytime I eat at McDonald's because <laughs> I feel like as a quote-unquote fitness channel, this is not, not a good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's not a good uh, responsible thing to do, but this is the reality, right? Like some days, number one, you crave it, and second, and other days, you're just really busy or really tired, and you just want to knock out some food. And there's other things I could definitely go get, but this was on the way. It's convenient. And I don't know, I think sometimes these reali the fitness channels that you see, it's so hard to follow because you kind of watch their day to day. And I think a lot of them do live that way, you know, where they're just very strict with themselves. But I'm not a very strict person, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to lose weight fast. I'm not trying to 
be uber strict with myself. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be so uber constricted with my diet that, you know, I, uh, I'm always trying to like fight, fight. Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. That was a big jump. Fight for my meals or anything, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do and like stress over it because I feel like anxiety over food is also not healthy. Obviously, like I've talked about it many times before, it's an 80-20 thing. 80% of the time, eat healthy, eat conscious, but the 20% of the time, 10 to 20% of the time, sometimes you got, sometimes you do what you want to do or you got to do. And so I do feel like recently Matt and I have been having a little bit more McDonald's than I think we really should be, but I'm not going to beat myself over it. It's not something we do every single day. We actually eat at home most of the time, three meals a day. So I'm not so concerned about it. I think the most responsible thing I could do as like a quote unquote fitness channel, whatever the hell this is, is to probably never show a McDonald's. But this is my reality right now. It's what I do. And I just, I don't want you guys to be ashamed, you know, about getting a McDonald's or a Pizza Hut or eating a Tyson's oven baked chicken or Tyson's chicken tenders every once in a while. Like, it's just something you gotta do. You, some, sometimes it just happens. So, I'd rather you all not feel guilty, guilty about yourselves than, uh, than trying to maintain like this image of pure strictness and health, you know what I mean? And I feel like if a lot more uh, fitness influencers were, I don't know, a little less strict and maybe even, maybe even a little bit more honest about their day-to-day -day food eating habits, not to say that fitness influencers lie, but I'm just saying, you know, I think it would be a little bit more easier for me to watch them or to relate to them because then it just feels like oh this isn't like a normal person living a normal life eating normal things <laughs> obviously like I said my eating habits on a day-to-day -day, when I have my chicken meal prepped and my vegetables meal prepped is very very healthy um, I don't no typically eat this stuff but sometimes you do sometimes you just crave that little fizzy coke you know what I mean Anyways, I'm gonna go, because I got some shit to do. Gotta take a shower, gotta eat my food, and then I got a stream tonight, which I'm really excited about. Um, so hopefully you guys were able to go out there and get your walking in or get your exercise in, and if you haven't done it yet, hopefully you still you still go out and do it. And if you can't, oh, sorry, oh my God, buddy, you poor thing, I just, I just smacked you in the mouth. If you can't, you know, if you have to take a day off, that's totally okay. You got to take care of you. Only you know you. But try to walk if you can. Even if, you, even if you're not feeling it. Especially if you're not feeling it. I think, for me personally, there's, there are reasons why not to go for a walk, right? Maybe you're in too much pain. Maybe you've got certain things going on. Maybe you're super busy. But not feeling it get out there and walk for 15 to 30 minutes, you know? If you're going to end up sitting on the couch and watching some kind of brain rot TV or something, you can do that when you get back. Hell, you could do that on the walk. If you have a cell phone, you could literally watch Netflix as you walk. I don't recommend it. It's very dangerous, but you could still do that. So if you're just not feeling it, if that's your reasoning, get your ass out there. Don't give me that shit. Anyways, I hope wherever you're at, morning, noon, and night, it's a good one. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.